Today's show is all about making new pillow covers for the new year. Welcome to AccuQuilt Live. I'm Pam Heller, AccuQuilt's cutting expert. Hey, thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. All right, Chris is in the house. How are you, Chris? We can't hear you, Chris. But we like you. He's muted. There we go. How's there that? we go. I'm doing well today. Thanks, Pam. What are you doing in life? Anything new and exciting? I am getting ready for QuiltCon, so I have a couple projects I have to get done in time, and I'm oh, trying. Yeah. So I'm hoping to get them done. <laughs> you're going to be in our booth what day? Which day? I will be at the Loving Stitches booth on Friday and Sunday. Okay, so if you're going to QuiltCon, go find Chris. He will give you stickers. Is that true? It is true. I have brand new stickers <sighs> just for QuiltCon. I need to have stickers. I, if you're not going to QuiltCon and going to AQS Daytona, I will be there in the lounge. I actually have water chairs and chargers for your phone. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> so good. I'll be there all the days. Um, but QuiltCon will be super fun for you. I'm excited for you to go hang out with Loving Stitches. Are you? Is that the ensemble you're going to wear? Probably not. I am still planning my outfits i wore this one at the houston quilt festival yes when we saw carolina moore yes yeah okay super fun super fun and hey chris are you doing our quilt along because we're going to talk about it real quick we yes. are doing the go tangled star it starts next wednesday this is the go grapefruit slice throw quilt uh, it starts next Wednesday, so Chris will not be here with me, but the lovely Erica will be here with me, and we're going to be cutting and sewing blocks. Chris, what colorway are you doing? I think I'm going to have a black background and then just bright colors for the rest, and it'll probably end up a little scrappy. Okay, I love everything I <laughs> about that. Okay. All right, where's everyone watching from today? I just realized that I'm wearing, I did go home and change. Like, these are what I wore yesterday, but I'm wearing clean clothes. <laughs> I just now realized that's what it was. Okay, Paula is watching from uh, Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota. And Jan is watching from Aurora, Oregon. Hi, Jan. And Chris is watching from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Thanks for joining us, folks. All right, let's showcase some new projects from our intro video. First up, this is uh, from Melissa T. All right, so Chris, did you make an exploding heart quilt? I have not, but I love seeing all the different renditions of them. Yep, so we're gonna give a huge props to Laura Pyland from A Slice of Pie. She designed this absolutely phenomenal viral quilt pattern. It's called Exploding Heart. And actually Laura designed it using our Ohio Star die, but you could actually use any size cube to make it, you'd have to do a little pattern translation, but it's just beautiful. Melissa T did a great job. Both Eric and I made one last year, I love them. Next we have Mrs. Arizona Family Zoo. So this is um, the Stars in the Crown quilt along that we made last year. Chris, do you love this fabric? I do, it looks like it's all rainbow, but like different, there's a dark and medium on the light. Yes. It's so fun. Yes, I think it's fabulous. Good job. Good job. And props on getting all of the stripes going in the same direction. <laughs> right? I was working on a quilt the other day that had some directional fabric. And I really had to think about that. I, you know, you have to just be in a quiet place and do it. Mm -hmm. All right, here's my photo of the day. This is New York City, and uh, this is actually Manhattan. And I love New York City. I love everything about it. I love the noise and the people, and I just think it's great. So since we're using the Go Tractor die today, my question today is, are you a city folk or are you country folk? So here in the Dream Studio, um, Kenyon lives on the verge of both. He likes to, his ideal would be to live in a small town outside a big city, and I kind of get that. I, I grew up um, about 30 minutes outside of Seattle on 
okay, it wasn't a farm. We like boarded horses and we had cows and pigs and but it wasn't, we didn't work on the farm. <laughs> we just played on the farm. Uh, but then you were 30 minutes from Seattle, so I get that. But both Brock and Greg are big city folk. How about you, Chris? Are you city folk or country folk? Definitely a city folk. Yeah, yeah. Is Portland the biggest city you've ever lived in? I think so. I did live in Denver for a little bit. Oh, I think Denver I is probably outside. bigger than Portland. I think geographically, it's larger. Oh, sure. I don't know about population, though. Yeah. And then I lived outside of Phoenix for quite a while. Oh, so hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let us know in the comment section, are you a city mouse or a country mouse? Or maybe you like to be in the middle of both. Today, I'm going to give away one of our Go Tractor dies and a June Taylor Quilt As You Go pillow cover kit. Be sure and register for future events on the AccuQuilt event page for the chance to win. Chris is going to announce the winner of our registered viewer at the end of the show. All right, so both the Go Tractor Die and the June Taylor Quilt As You Go uh, Pillow Cover Kit are available on the AccuQuilt website. So this is what we're going to do. Now, this actually has three different pillows that you can use in it. Um, we're just going to use one and we'll talk about it. So for this project, you're gonna need the Go Tractor Die, the June Taylor Quilt As You Go Pillow Cover Kit, and a three inch strip die to make your strips, okay? All right, so before we start sewing Quilt As You Go, let's take a look at the Tractor Die. Okay, this is super cute. This is our Go Tractor Die, we launched it yesterday. Um, its shapes are in a six by 12 die board, so you, it will fit through all of our cutters including the Go Me. These seven shapes would be so difficult to cut by hand, I would never cut them by hand, but now there's a die that's going to uh, cut them. So we have already pre-fused our fabric. We're gonna cut some uh, cotton fabric. And with this, you're going to um, be able to cut, normally we can cut six layers of fabric, but with if it's pre-fused, we can only cut four, okay? So what I've done is I prefused my fabric according to the packaging. Now, this is a directional shape. So depending on which way you want your tractors to go, you might want to think about that. All right. So we're going to have red tractors in honor of Lynn Gibney. She's the only one here in the studio who lives on a farm and they have red tractors. So I'm making red ones. All right. And we're going to need a 6 by 12 cutting mat. Today I'm gonna to use our Go Big, but remember you can fit through all of our Go Cutters, including the Go Me. All right, Chris, while I'm cutting, tell us if people are country folk or city folk. All right. Let's see, Barbara says she's a country gal who has lived in and by very large cities. Okay. Sharon says, love to visit the big cities and country, but enjoy living in a mid-sized city. Oh, there you go. Best of both worlds. Yep. Boy, is it staticky here as I'm trying to peel off my pieces. Okay. All right. Bernadette says that she's definitely country folk. She grew up in a big city. I would not go back for all the money in the world. <laughs> well, there is the answer there. <laughs> um, you know, when Ray and I were first married, we lived in um, Long Beach, California. Oh. And there we go. All right, so I'm gonna take my little pieces here and we're gonna hold on to them for a minute because we're not gonna use them quite yet. Um, and Long Beach was a great city to live in. Well, one, because it was by the beach. Uh, but two, it was kind of that same kind of thing. You were, you know, 30 minutes from LA, but you could kind of be a little smaller town. All right, so now let's look at the pillow that we're gonna make. So this is the Quilt As You Go batting. And I'm using the one that has the square on point. And like I said, this packaging has three different uh, uh, designs you can choose from, okay? But I'm just gonna do this one. And then what I've done is I have trimmed it down. I've used some uh, June Taylor basting spray. And I've, this is the backing of my pillow cover. Okay, it has to have fabric in the back, 
all right? So I've just used that basting spray. Here's my big pro tip when you're doing basting spray. Um, you just want to take it outside. Um, I found that if I spray it here on my good green mat, chances are um, it sprays over, okay? Now here is the trick. The, the success tip is uh, you want to pre-cut your fabrics according to the directions, okay? You want to prep your fabric because what you're, otherwise you're going to be laying down your pieces and then you're going to kind of be moving stuff around and you just want to have all your pieces ready. So this is some super cute fabric. You can see it has little horses here. And this is my center square, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give it, now that I told you to go outside, um, I'm just gonna give it a little quick spray here in the studio, because this is the only piece I'm gonna spray down. You could for sure use some of our glue sticks from June Taylor as well, okay? Okay, so look at this. So I'm just gonna lay it here, all right? Now the rest of the pieces um, are three inches and I cut them with my strip die, my three inch finish strip, three inch, two and a half inch finish strip die. So here's my pro tip. If you're making more than one pillow, put them together in assembly line method. Like have all of your backings ready and then just do the center and then keep going, okay? All right, now just a reminder, quilters, <laughs> that these blue lines here, these are um, not sewing lines. These are placement lines, okay? So now what I've done is I have cut my fabric, okay, just right here, and we're gonna stitch a quarter of an inch, okay? And then we're gonna pull it out here and it's gonna work perfectly, okay? So a quarter of an inch from the solid line. All right, Chris, I while you, I sew, tell us if people I are- I think you have folks. that on the wrong line though. Oh, thank you. You I'm were sure just you gonna tell me that, weren't you guys? <laughs> this is why I'm, I was like, wait, <laughs> good. Okay, yes, so now we're gonna do it on the correct line so that we didn't have to stop. I have made mistakes, some. Okay, so here we go. All right, Chris, and while I'm sewing, two and three, uh, you wanna tell us if people are country folk or city folk? We actually have a couple questions first. Oh yes, let's do questions. Um, Elizabeth says, I thought fusing adds a layer, so I would assume you could only use three pieces of material. Fusing adds a half a layer. Great. So we just count it as a half. So you can do up to four. Up to four. And that includes but that's the paper, cotton. right? What? That includes the paper, like you don't have to peel the paper off before you cut? Nope. Nope. Perfect. That's a great question. But you can also cut other things, like felt and flannel and denim and wool and cork and minky. Start with one or two layers of that. Yesterday on our show, one of our experts took the tire track, the tires from the tractor die. Look at these. And then so I cut the hearts from the gingerbread cookie accessories, the accessories die. And I have um, peel and stick magnets that I'm gonna put on the back and I'm gonna take them to my grandkids for Valentine's Day and put them on the fridge. So fun. I know, I love that. Okay, so start with one or two of those layers that are thicker. That's a great question. Okay, what other questions do we have? What size is the center square on that pattern? It is a six and a half inch cut. Six and a half, okay. Yep, yep, and then these are, I'm reading my things, three inch strips. Okay, so we're gonna do two and three, and then we're gonna press them away. All right, do we have city and country folk, or do we have more we questions? Do. 
Uh, we do have some more city and country folk. And Danette actually did some little research for me. It turns out Portland has a population of about 641,000, and Denver is at about 711,000. So Denver is a larger city than Portland. Just bigger. Uh, Portland's yes. about the size of Omaha. Omaha is about 600,000 and some change. I did not know that. Yeah, Omaha is a nice big city. We have a world-class zoo. Next time Ooh, you come I'm here, Chris. I'm going to go visit that. Next yeah. time I, you come here, I'm taking you to the zoo. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> they can just fight me on it, okay? So now I've pressed my two fabrics away, right? Okay, now I'm going to add strips four and five with the same method. Now, I want to talk about this because I thought this was super cute. So the fabric I used had little tractors in it. And I really wanted to fussy cut them a little bit. Um, and so I did. Think about fussy cutting. Um, you, you're going to kind of waste a little bit of fabric. But it's okay because now look, see, on each of my little pieces, I have that cute little red tractor. Okay. All right, so now we're going to go here and do the same thing. So remember, the solid lines are placement lines, so in a quarter of an inch. All right, Chris, what you got for me? Uh, Mary is asking, does this kit only come in one size for the pillows? Uh, yes. Do you want me to tell you what they finished to? It 16 looks like inches. 16 inch pillow. Yeah. I have my little kit right here. There you go. Ready to go. You know, my the tough decision great thing about is this, I mean, I'm using the tractor die, but the great thing uh -huh. about these, that little kit right here is that that center square is six and a half inches, which is great real estate for lots of different applique shapes. You, yes. I mean, you wouldn't have to just use the tractor die, but. I just have to decide what fabrics I'm going to use on mine. I know. It's a tough decision. So much fabric, so little time, Chris. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, so now I'm going to decide. I think I'll have my tractors go opposite ways. Um, I was with the lovely Erica recently at um, Kelly Quilts in Sacramento. A huge mm -hmm. shout out to um, Tava and Joe for letting us come hang out there. And... Chris, I almost died. They had an entire wall of grunge. Ooh. I walked very quickly by it. <laughs> because I noticed that there were colors I did not have, which really kind of surprised me because I have quite the collection. But, oh, my gosh. It was a beautiful quilt store. If you're in the Sacramento area, check them out. They're Kelly quilts. Say hi to Tave and Joe for us. All right, so you ready? So now look, okay, and these have chickens on them, which I think is super fun. All right, so before I cut my um, half square triangles, Chris, which, which AccuQuilt product should new quilters start with? If you're new to AccuQuilt, what should you start with? I always recommend the cube system. Yep. My favorite is the eight inch. Yes, and they are back in stock. We were out of stock oh, for a good. while, and they are now back in stock. So I agree. I feel like it comes with those eight shapes, 72 mix and match patterns. We have lots of videos on our website and our YouTube channel on how to use our cubes. So um, if you're new to AccuQuilt, I'm going to tell you to get a cube. Okay. All right, Chris, or do we have uh, city folk, country folk? Yes. Here, i got to turn my iron on. So Keep Judy says that she was a city girl who married a farmer and moved to a little town when they retired. Oh, that okay, that's like I a little probably sweet be the same story. Way. That's a sweet story. Okay. My kids say to me all the time, this is, it's so funny, they ask me this. They're like, Mom, where are you and Dad going to retire to? And I say to them always, you know that house that's paid for in West Omaha? That's where we're going to retire <laughs> to. I the think they place. think we're going to like, I don't know, buy a house in Maui or something. They're, they're hoping for that anyway. Okay, so look what I did, quilters. The um, instructions tell you to cut a nine and a half inch square, which I did. Uh, there isn't a die for that. And then, um, so I cut them with rotary cutter and then cut them in half. 
because these are the four corners that come right here. Look at how fun this is going to be, Chris. Chris, maybe that you should do so like cute. chickens and cow fabric. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Look at Someone this. Someone actually asked what fabric line is that that you're using? I got nothing. Oh. I can look. I can look. I'll post it. That um, this is Riley is Blake. Cute. This is Riley, Riley Blake, Blake because the center ones, because um, our educator who made our fun little project last night or for yesterday's show, she did. Um, she used Riley Blake fabric. Okay, but the chickens and pigs are going to look. All right, so see, okay. this is how it's going to look. And I purposely wanted to lay it out because, like, this way, more pigs are standing upright. <laughs> see, the barns are kind of, it's not really directional fabric because they go all sorts of cattywampus. But look, more pigs line up that way. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so now cute. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna go six and seven. Well, I'm gonna go six and seven. And then eight and nine. All righty. All right, Chris, do we have more questions? Yes, I think we kind of answered this, but Mary's asking which cube is best to start with. Yeah, why why do you think the eight inch cube? I like the eight inch cube because it comes with the two and a half inch or two inch finished half square triangle, four and a half inch half square triangle, and then two and a half inch, four and a half inch squares. And those seem to be really common sizes with all the pre-cuts that are out there. Yes. So I think it is more compatible with more patterns. Right. And I would also tell you why you're getting a new cube. For sure you need a two and a half inch strip die. Because And if you don't have a cutter already, you can just do the ready, set, go combo and get all yes. of it. And it comes with all the mats and all the things. Yep, that's a great idea. Okay. I'm glad the cubes are back in stock. I actually have had a couple people recently reach out. Oh, and I sent so them many. Links. So many of you <laughs> reached out, out to me. Stock. Said, hey, Pam. So, no, there was a little happy dance in the warehouse the other day when the cubes came back in stock I'm so sure. that's kind of fun all right are people country folk or city folk annette says she's big city here but dreams of country living once she's retired as long as they can get good internet that is very important <laughs> <laughs> okay all right yes good internet and cable right okay that makes sense that's We've got funny. lots of country folk or small towns mm -hmm. kind of on the border between city and country. Yeah, Nebraska's full of small towns. It's kind of fun. All right. So here we go. See, look how fast this is. Just putting this all together. Okay. And now I'm going to add... My little sides here. So really quilters, if you weren't talking like me, you could probably put this together in 10 minutes. <laughs> but we're having a good time talk chatting, so it's all good. Okay, so I'm just gonna line it up here and do my last two seams, and then we'll talk about trimming. Okay. Don't forget if you have questions, be sure and let Chris know in the comments section. Huge shout out to our team who's helping with comments today. We do have some questions here. Uh, so Sandra's asking, what is the fabric under the batting? It's just white Kona cotton. Just white? Yeah. yeah. So that fabric's actually going to end up being the inside of the pillow? Yes. So when I make pillows like this, I tell folks, you know, use a solid or maybe some of that not so pretty fabric that's just cluttering up your stash oh, that you have no idea what to do with it. Idea. That's a great yeah. idea, Chris. It's a great use for those. Uh, I don't like to say ugly, but those not that so That fabric you don't love so as much. Fabrics. Yes. Okay. Okay, and then we have one more. And I love one this more. fabric here too because it has little horses on it and it's just super cute. 
Okay, we'll do our last one here. Um, we're gonna also, like, when we do um, our block on board or Bob dies, we're gonna always tell you to make a test block, and that's also a good use for that fabric you might not love as much anymore. Very true. So we met a quilter um, this summer when Eric and I were traveling. Okay, I thought this was kind of brilliant. She makes all of her test blocks out of the same fabrics. So when she's done, she can make a sampler quilt. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. I thought that was really, really clever. I might have to try that. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see, Sandra's asking, is there a die for the heart quilt you showed earlier? Um, so that was the exploding heart. Yes. It was originally designed, I think you said, with the Ohio Star? Yes. So if you own a okay. cube, you can make that. The pattern's mm -hmm. called Exploding Heart, and the artist is Laura Pyland from A Slice of Pie, and P-I, like the symbol mm -hmm. math. And you can go to her website and order it, because it's fabulous. Yeah. I have met, uh, hung out with Laura several times, and she is just delightful. Okay, my... Iron is not going to reach all this way, so I'm going to go over here, and I, can you help me, Greg? I'll look, Greg is going to help. Oh, did you get caught? I did, but Greg helped. Wonderful. Okay. Robin's asking, when are you going to be at the Quilted Cow again? <laughs> we were just there Saturday. <laughs> um, oh. I don't know, but we had such a great time there. Eric and I went, and it was just terrific, and like I say, Tava and Joe, they are just phenomenal people. We had a great time. All right, well, so now what? So you the don't want to cow. touch your hot that's... iron to that June Taylor batting. This is not even hot, hold on. Um, you don't want to touch a hot iron there because, thank you. What happens, Chris, if you touch a hot iron <laughs> to your June Taylor batting? It just it melts melt. it. Yeah, the batting's not so bad as the interfacing, but you still want to be careful. Yeah, yeah, those little interfacing. So, yes, you can use your cube, and you can make it out of any size. When Eric and I made the Exploding Heart um, pattern, we used the 8-inch cube because uh, it just made the perfect size. But for sure, you could use any size cube. So be sure and check out that pattern. It truly blew up the Internet. It really was a viral pattern, and... I'm just it so really excited did. for Laura because she's delightful. Okay, so now I'm just going to press down my corners here. Okay. And then Betty's we're going to um, put our tractor in the middle. And Chris, I figured out what I'm supposed to do here to finish this. Oh, good. Good to try new things. Okay. All right, so now I have my fabric facing the way I want it to face. And I have my die. Oh, here. Here we go. All right, so quilters, when you're um, doing our applique, I'm not going to worry about doing any embroidery over this. If you wanted to do embroidery, now would be the time to do it. And um, it's going to put down a placement stitch and it's going to place for each of the pieces of the tractor. So uh, we have lots of videos on our YouTube channel on how to do embroidery. But Chris, you have some exciting embroidery news. Yes, I'm getting an embroidery machine so I can do more applique projects. I'm loving that. And is it right there in your little hot little hands? It just got delivered this morning. Yay. Okay, so I'm going to lay out my pieces before I press them down. Because, gosh. Okay, so notice, quilters. I'm just, I already pre-fused my fabric, so now I can just peel off the papers. Okay. Just going to line everything up. Chris, why I'm lining stuff up for people, country folk or city folk? We've got a pretty good mix. We've also got a lot of people who are both. Maybe they grew up in the city and retired to the country or vice versa. 
Yeah. Um, do have a few more questions here. Betty's asking when the if the strip cover blah, cannot talk if the strip cutters are coming back soon. Two and a half. Are we inch out of strip. stock on some strips? Yeah, two and a half inch strip been out of stock for a hot minute. Uh, they should be back soon. I don't know when, but we know. Sorry. Okay. So keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, you get, the great thing about AccuQuilt is we're going to notify you when your die ships. So you'll get a little email saying, hey, ta-da. I don't think they say that, but they should. <laughs> they should totally say, hey, ta-da. Your die is back in stock. Okay, so notice I'm just taking the paper off. Okay. Do my Chris, did you watch yesterday's show? Did you see the monster truck? I did. That, that was you so can cool. make with Pam's pickup truck. Oh my gosh. I just about lost my mind. I love it. <laughs> okay. All right. Go ahead. Oh, Elizabeth's asking, what do you recommend for the machine itself as easier to use if you're retired? The turn by hand or the electric? Oh, what do you, uh, the electric for sure. Because then you don't, then you can just, you can just cut pieces. You don't have to yes. turn the handle. And now you can buy like cubes and strip dies and to build like your own bundle with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I like the fact that with my electric cutter, I can be cutting and then prepping fabric for the next one and cutting and prepping. Okay, so look, my, my tractor's going the right way. <laughs> <laughs> Get it. I tell you, some days, Chris. I was making something the other day for step outs and I think I sewed it wrong three times because I just- Oh no. Well, you know, once you do it once, wrong once, you think, wait, wait, is this the right or is this the wrong? Okay, so look at this. Okay. Okay. All right, Greg, can you help me again? Oh, I got it. Thank you. Okay, so now look at this. Our little top is done. If you wanted to, you could add some additional stitching. I am not going to, but I am going to trim the edges. So you can see right here where um, it comes to the corners. I'm just gonna trim it down so that it's even. And just be really careful with a rotary cutter and a ruler. That's just all I have to say. Okay, just be careful. All right, so basically it's gonna trim it so that it's quarter of an inch. And then we're gonna stitch around the edge and um, Go from there, okay? It helps to have a more. good rotary cutter. Go ahead, Chris, sorry. Yeah, no, I've got some more questions while you're trimming there. Um, this is back when you were ironing, but Debbie asked, could you use a Teflon sheet when you, uh, on top so you don't touch the batting? You with could, your you could, and we yes. sell those on our website and that's a great idea. Yep, a Teflon sheet or even just one of the June Taylor pressing sheets, anything mm -hmm. to keep the metal from touching the batting or the interfacing. Yep, that's a great, that's a great call. All right. And then a couple questions about the exploding heart. Um, what size <laughs> Laura pickle Pilon, ends you're up? You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, questions of what size is the quilt when you use the eight inch cube and what size are the squares? Yeah, and that so, uh, you would need to buy the pattern right. so that you can do the conversion. That is if you use a different size. Yeah, if you use a different size cube, your quilt will end up a different size. So it'll just take a little bit of quilty math to figure that out. Right. The pattern itself is written for the eight inch cube. Okay. So the the way that it, whatever the finish size on it is, um, it's because she used the eight inch cube. She used the know. standalone Ohio star die, which um, finishes to a 12 inch block. So equal to the eight inch cube. Okay. Awesome. But yeah, good job, Laura Pylon. I love that. It's a very fun pattern. Okay, look, Chris, I think I'm gonna give this to the Gibney. Oh, she would love that. 
Oh, good. That is the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the pattern. And here is the, oh, man, there's a pin there. Here is the backing. So basically, it is two pieces, um, 13 and a half by 17 and a half. And then I just pressed it over and stitched down the hem on it, OK? And then I pinned it together because what you want it to make is a 17 and a half inch block, which it did. So you're going to, these are two separate pieces. And I just pinned them together. Oh, it is now Mason Heller's turn to call. OK, Taylor called earlier. Mm -hmm. Now. What I'm going to do here, so th see how this is just, a, the backing is just a little bit bigger than the, the top, and that's okay with me, okay? But what I am going to do is, um, rather than trim this off and waste it, I'm just going to take my little pins, okay? I put pins in here to keep the two pieces aligned. I'm just going to pull one up just a little bit. And it, it's nice to just kind of lay them next to each other and make sure they're the same size. OK? OK, super easy. So two pieces, they're both hemmed. All right. Now, <laughs> you have a couple of options here. The pattern tells you to put these two pieces together Okay, and we're just gonna we're just gonna stitch along that quarter inch seam, okay, and then I'm gonna trim it down, and then it has you binding the pillow. So see now you can have a little bit of contrast, okay, and so I have already cut my binding strips and pressed them. I know it is shocking, okay. All right, so I, I'm going to pin these pieces back together. And while I stitch all the way, notice I put wrong sides together, quilters, because we're going to bind it. Now, if you didn't want to bind it, you could just put right sides together, stitch around, and turn it inside out. Perfectly, perfectly fine to do that. OK, but I'm just going to come in here and do a little uh, scant quarter inch seam so that I can keep my pieces together. Chris, when you do uh, pillows, do you usually put binding on them, or do you just turn them inside out? I usually just turn them inside out. Yeah. N nice and quick. Yep. Yep. OK, do we have more questions while I'm pinning here? Yes. Donna's asking, do you use steam when you do applique? I never do. Um, and the reason I don't is what I found is sometimes the wetness from the steam distorts the shapes. Mm. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, you're laying it down and that steam is going to kind of pull it. And you, you don't want that. You want it to be nice and tight. So I don't ever, I hardly ever use steam. Lots of people I know, um, like, use starch savvy to, before they start, you know, then they iron their fabric before they use it. Mm -hmm. So just lots of ways, but yeah, I don't usually use steam. All right, so now I've pinned and now I'm going to sew. And then we'll show you how to lay out our binding. All right. And Chris, do we have city folk, country folk? Yes. yes. Tracy says she's a city girl at heart, but likes to stay close enough to the city for shopping in quilt stores. Oh, amen, sister. Priorities. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm just doing like a little scant quarter inch. Okay, I just want to put my seams together before I bind it. I do not want my pillow to come apart, especially since no. I'm going to give it to the Gibney. She lives on a farm. She has cows and tractors. Okay. Ooh. Robin's asking, is this an envelope pillow? 
Uh, sure. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Sure. Oh, I, yes, because it's, it's not, oh, it's closed on the back. It's not open like a pillow case. Correct. Yep. Yeah, so it's an envelope style pillow. Is that what flats. she means, Chris? Yeah. So okay. you just shove your pillow form in there. There's no closures, but it's not like open on one end like a pillow sham. Okay. I've never had anybody ask me that before. That's a great question. Okay. And then Randy's asking, is AccuQuilt going to do the Quilts of Valor blocks this year? Uh, oh, yes, yes, we are. I got a letter from the folks at Quilts of Valor. And yes, we are. And I don't know what the block design is yet, uh, but we typically design it so that you can use a cube, which okay. is kind of cool. It looks like they go on to say, it looks like it's the Ohio star, but instead of squares in the corners, it's half square triangles. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah, I, yes, we are big supporters of Quilts of Valor. I learned this amazing thing. A couple of years ago, um, Okay, I am not this important. Um, my watch goes off every time my phone goes off because I brought my phone into the <laughs> studio. This is why we can't have nice things. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was in uh, Myrtle Beach and I gave a presentation at the Quilts of Valor National Meeting. And I learned that in North Carolina, they, well, they have chapters, you know, all over the country. But in North Carolina, they have a group that took over a, someone donated an old library. Oh, my, hold please. Oh no, did your bobbin run out? No, my top broke. Oh. That's okay. Just as bad. Yes. Real life sewing here at Hackney <laughs> Live. Um, Anyway, I, um, I learned that somebody donated this old library and that Quilts of Valor takes and they, um, okay, talking and threading a needle, there we go. So what they did was they took the books shelves and what they did was they filled them with fabric that they used to cut blocks from. And they had like this whole assembly line place in this little library in North Carolina. And that little library in North Carolina makes 20,000 blocks a year. Wow. I mean, well, yeah, because they got all the stuff, right? Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of blocks. <laughs> right. And they have the fabric is donated and they used um, go cutters to cut the shapes and... It was really amazing. They were quite proud of it. Okay, now I have to see where I stopped sewing. <sighs> I was just going right along too, boy. Ah, mm. all right, it's okay. We'll have enough time to show you how to do the binding real quick. Okay, all right, Chris, country folk, city folk questions? Uh, questions and comments here, it looks like. Um, someone's asking how we run out of the tractor dies yet. Have we what? Have we run out of the tractor dies Not yet? Not yet. But it is the die to try, so get them before they're gone. It is the die to try, so it's the die for the month of February. <laughs> um, you can also get it from your local AccuQuilt retailer, uh, but you can also get it from us. We, it took, we were a little delayed in our shipment. Um, so we took the only tractor die in the building with us to um, California last week to Cali Quilts. And we actually um, showed it while we were there. It's super fun. Okay. Oh, so they got a little sneak peek. They did get a little sneak peek. Sometimes we go rogue and do things like that. I'm taking six inch cubes with me to uh, Daytona and we're gonna make blocks. 
using that six inch fun. cubes. Yeah, that you can like take home with you. It's like a door Oh, very cool. Yeah. Yeah, so you can cut and sew a block. Our good friends at Riley Blake are donating fabric. Speaking of Riley Blake, if you're not doing the Riley Blake quilt along, you should. Um, Eric and I have joined it and you can, um, most of the blocks you can use are dice. Okay, so oh, look. Nice. So see, I have a nice pillow here. Okay, so I really am gonna trim just a little bit where the front and the back didn't match. And then I'm gonna show you about binding because I'm super impressed that I did that. Binding is the hardest thing for me, Chris, is what's the thing that is hardest for you in finishing quilts? Just time? Mm. <laughs> Definitely time. I've gotten pretty good at machine binding. I use, I think it's, my machine helps a lot, like yes, on my new machine. Yes, I do machine binding as well. Yeah, yeah. My old vintage machine just could not handle the bulk, so I did it all by hand, and that's very oh. time-consuming. So lovely Jill on our team, Jill of our hearts, she hand binds all of her quilts. I just that's find impressive. that amazing. Erica does a lot of hand binding. I do if it's a smaller project, but if it's a bigger project, boy, howdy. I'm going to use my machine. Okay, so now, <laughs> I love these little scraps. All right, so now here's what we have done. We have our tractor die ready, or tractor pillow ready, and this is actually three, I gotta read the pattern. The binding is three and a half inches. And so I used the three and a half inch strip die, and then I folded it in half. Yep, okay. Fold it in a half wrong sides together, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start like right here. Chris, do you, is this how you do it? You do it from the front and then do the little stitch in the ditch? I, I do it both ways where it's front to back or back to front. I think it just depends on what mood I'm in. <laughs> there you go. Um, the pattern tells you to do it this way, so I'm gonna do it this way. So I've, I've pressed down the corner of my binding because what I want to do, and this is a little thicker, wider binding, and that's okay because mm -hmm. you want it to go onto the back side. Okay, so what I've done is I've pinned it, and then I'm going to stop here at a quarter of an inch, and then I'm going to do my little thing, and then I'm going to bring it around to the back and then stitch in the ditch. So let's do a little binding. We have a few minutes. I can show you how to do it, okay? All right, binding is kind of one of those things that is like a personal preference, you know? Yes. Don't you think? Yep. And I bind yep. the way that the lady who taught me how to quilt binds. And nobody ever, I've never done it differently. So I think too, it just like maybe you your grandmother taught you how to <laughs> quilt, and so you make binding like your grandmother. I'm totally tearing up the farm set, guys. Sorry. The cows are being displaced. Uh-oh. That's okay. Okay, so I've come here to the corner. I've done a quarter of an inch. I'm going to pull it back so I have that nice angle, and then I'm going to come right here and pin it because I want my angles to stay straight. And the great thing about pillows is that they're super easy and fast to bind. Yes. So, and that way you can just be done and finish it. It's always nice to have those quick, quick win projects. I know. Especially between I'm, larger projects. Yes. I'm almost done with my Valentine's table runner. I'm gonna finish it up today. Because Valentine's Day yeah, is next week. It is. It's with I can't the jewel it's petals. Already, yeah, it's already February. This year is flying by. It's crazy. All right, Chris, do we have city folk and country folk? Uh, let's see. We do have some comments in here. Um, Patty says that she has the same problem I do with any project uh, that she's planning out. It 
choosing fabric. Yeah. So she's got the quilt as you go table runner and placemats, but hasn't put it together because she cannot make up her mind on fabric. Oh, <laughs> yes. We get that. We get that. Sometimes um, I buy fabric first, not very often. Sometimes I buy fabric first and then I try to find projects to go with it, uh -huh. which is so backwards because you really need to know like how much yardage you need and so on and so forth. So it I've really is backwards. That. Yeah, I've done that and I always end up not getting enough of the fabric. Oh, Chris. <laughs> oh, see there. Yeah. Just by a good amount of yardage there. Yeah. Okay, and I'm just going right along here. Got a couple more country city folk in here. Karen says that she grew up on a farm and married a city boy. He calls her earthy sometimes. That's earthy. <laughs> that's, cl that's clever. <laughs> okay. I wonder what Jenny she calls she... him. <laughs> Hopefully something nice and sweet. Yes. Uh, Jenny says she grew up in the city and the country. Uh, her dad was a firefighter in the city and uncle is a rancher. Um, and now her cousin is too. She wishes to live in the city, but is okay with, the, or live in the country, but the city is okay for the most part. There you go. Hey, and kudos to all of those uh, volunteer firefighters who live in rural counties all over the country. Yes. I, uh, in a second, we'll tell you my funny story. All right, tell us comments and about cities and countries. Uh, Mary says, a country raised her four kids on a 1,200 acre farm. Oh, that wow. A lot of land. Uh, Darlene is a small town girl. They only have three traffic lights. They only have three what? Three traffic lights. Oh, I, there's towns in Nebraska that have just a stop, a four-way stop. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm almost done. <laughs> really anxious almost to there. just finish this. Oh, here, I gotta turn my iron back on so I can press it away. Cecilia says she was born in the city and now she's a country folk. Ah, there we go. One more time, Greg, can you help me? Thank you. Greg's our camera guy. We don't often see him. He's helping me tons today. Okay, come to the corner and pull it back. And then, I'm gonna pin it here. And when I started sewing my binding, I started way down here, okay? So before I finish this last strip, I'm gonna come back and just do a back and forth stitch here. And then I can tuck my little tail of my binding into that stitching. Erica does not do this at all. She and I bind completely different and I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. Couple of questions here. Yes. Um, a couple of people asked, actually asked me, do you need to do some applique stitch on the tractor to stabilize it? Um, you could, but I didn't, if that makes sense. So, um, you could do like uh, all over stitching. I feel like pillows aren't going to get washed. Mm -hmm. so, or as much wear and tear as yeah, like a quilt. Yeah, and I feel like these yeah. are seasonal, right? You could do, you know, you could do hearts for Valentine's Day and stars for the 4th of July. Okay. A uh, question for me, Jan is asking what brand my new machine is. So I have the Juki TL2010Q. It's that is so many letters. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, it's a semi-industrial machine, straight stitch only. 
Uh, but it does great going through all those layers when I do my binding. Right, because you make hats and such. I Yep, hats. I've started doing some bags, lots and lots of quilts. I sew pretty much every day. Yeah. And then Susan is asking, um, or kind of commenting, I don't know which way I do binding. I machine sew on the front, turn it over to the back, and hand sew. So which am I, a machine or a hand? Yes. So that would be hand binding. Yes. Yes, because you sew it down with your sewing machine, but you finish it hand binding. Okay, so yeah. here's what I'm going to show you how to do. And then... Um, we can be done for the day, almost, but I'm gonna take it almost home and there. finish binding it. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my good big iron, I'm gonna press this binding away, okay? And right here where the corners are, look at this. I'm gonna come on this side, this is the back, and I'm gonna press my corner Okay, I'm gonna move this so I don't melt my ruler. Okay, and then, see now when I go to top stitch it, see, look at how nice those corners are. You should always miter your yeah. corners, quilters, always. I've never done it that way when pressing. <laughs> I usually just ignore the corners when I press, uh, but I'm gonna try that on my next one. It really makes a difference. Because now you can miter, see now watch. So when I come here, then Chris the other way, I'm gonna press it as well. Mm. I I'm gonna know. get some nice crisp corners. Yeah, so now when I go to do my corners, look at how well they come together. Nice. Nice, 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 okay? So then I would finish pressing all the way around, press my binding, and then I would start and just stitch in the ditch. I'm gonna pin it, or you could use bindy clips mm -hmm. and then pin it, and then it will stitch here on the back and you will have your finished pillow. It finishes to 16 inches, which is a nice decorative size. All right, almost guys. It's okay though. All right, um, I'll show it to you on Facebook this afternoon when it's all finished. This month's Dye to Try is the Go Tractor Dye. It's only available through the end of the month and from our AccuQuilt website and our retailers. And be sure to share your finished projects with all of us on our social media platform, platforms using the hashtag AccuQuiltBuilt. All right, Chris, do we have any last questions? I think we got through them all. Good, good. Thank you for doing that. All right, do you want to announce our winner? Yes, so today's winner of the Go Tractor Die as well as the June Taylor Pillow Kit is, mm -hmm, drum roll please, it is Susan S. of Prescott Valley, Arizona. Congratulations, Susan. You're going to love this guy. You're going to love it. Hey, quilters, be sure and check out the AccuQuilt website for some great deals. We have this month's die to try and the Go Tractor Die. If you haven't already, make sure you throw your cart into your cart, the Go Tangled Star Die. That's what we're going to use next week, uh, starting in our quilt along. All right, Chris, who is on helping you with questions today? Today we have Courtney and Lauren, it looks Hi, like, helping Lauren on questions. And Courtney. All right, on behalf of our entire staff, we have Lauren and Courtney offsite. They are helping with questions. Thanks so much. We have Chris all the way from Portland, Oregon. Here in our studio, we have Kenyon and Brock and Greg. And I'm Pam. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. To learn more about your quilting craft, be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can check out the events page on the AccuQuilt website for more details on upcoming shows. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, visit our blog for exclusive tutorials filled with tips and tricks. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Join us on Tuesday at 12 noon Central Time as we get started with our AccuQuilt cutters and dies. And then be sure to join us for next week's AccuQuilt Live as we start the AQS AccuQuilt Along using the Go Tangled Star die. If you don't have one yet, be sure to put it in your cart today.